If your account has been compromised, do not fear. It may not be too late to protect things. I'm gonna take you through the five things you must do if you had a breach of a password or an important account. G'day, my name is Pete Moriarty. If you're new to the channel, I've been helping business owners for a number of decades with their tech support. We have tens of thousands of customers all over the world who rely on us to support them. Let me show you exactly what you need to do if you've got an account that has been compromised so you can protect yourself now and in the future. Number one, we're gonna do a password reset and depending on the severity, we may be resetting quite a few passwords. Now, unfortunately these days, many people repeat the passwords that they use and so just resetting one password may not be enough. Anywhere you have used the same password, you may need to change that password as well. And if you're in a situation where you fear that someone may have had access to a LastPass or a 1Password Vault or your Google Chrome, which stores or saves your passwords, well, you may need to be changing all of your passwords. But for starters, let's reset the password of the account that has been compromised. And when we reset that password, we're gonna use a password generator to make sure the new password is safe and secure. Now, my recommendation is at least 15, ideally 20 random characters, and that's gonna fulfill most password requirements on any website that you're working with. But it's also gonna make sure if someone's trying to brute force or guess that password, they're gonna have a very, very low chance of that. Now, it's not my recommendation for you to make up or guess your own password with your own characters, because they're the kind of things that one, are a little bit too easy to forget, and number two, well, they just make it easy for people to try and guess them. If they've guessed one of your passwords and you've got a bit of a system for your passwords, well, then they may be able to guess other passwords. My strong recommendation is to use a password manager. If you haven't already started, well, now may be a good time. Now, a password manager or a password vault is going to help you to create a random strong password for every website that you visit. Yes, there's the additional pain of having to use the plugin or the app to log into sites, but it means that you really only have to remember the one single password, and that's the password to get access to your vault. The rest of them will be automatically generated. And the reason that I like that is it keeps me diligent in not repeating passwords. It means that once I'm in the habit of signing up to a new website, I just generate a password, it gets stored in my vault, and I know that I can always access it there. The additional features of some password managers like LastPass allow you to share your password with team members or staff if you're running a business, and what that means is that you're able to share passwords a little more securely than in plain text by cutting and pasting. And that's gonna lower the risk of something going wrong in the future. Now, while we're talking about passwords, things are changing in this arena. You can use a passkey now if you're using a mobile device and most modern laptops, and that will allow you to use your computer or a second device as an authentication token. Rather than having to remember a password, well, you can actually use that device instead. You're probably still gonna have a password in the background, but you can use some kind of biometric authentication like a face recognition or a fingerprint to unlock certain websites. I like this idea as it means that it's less handling of passwords and less opportunities for somebody else to get access to your sites. After you've set up new passwords and perhaps even implemented a passkey, well, most modern websites will have a button somewhere which will allow you to sign out of all other sessions. And this step is really important because even though you've changed your password, if someone else is still accessing or logged into your account, well, they may have a remembered login and they may still be able to access it even after you've changed the password. If you make sure that you find out how to end all other sessions or log out everywhere else, it's gonna be different depending on the provider. Well, that's gonna make sure that only you have access to your account after you've changed that password. Let's move on to step two and let's fortify our accounts. Now, two-factor authentication is the best way to secure accounts from third parties who may want to access them. Even if someone has your username and your password, if they don't have your second factor of authentication, which is typically a code on your mobile phone generated by a code generator app, or it's less secure, but some services will send you a passcode via SMS, well, that will make sure that even if someone's got your details, they can't actually log into your account without that second factor device. Now, if you're using a tool like Google Workspace, you can actually enforce two-factor authentication across all of your users. And when you switch on that enforcement policy, it means that everybody in your business must use two-factor to access their accounts. It's my strong recommendation that you do that. Most other modern applications that allow multiple users will also give you the same option. Tools like Asana for task management or using the Facebook Business Manager will give you an option to force all of the users connecting to your business to have two-factor enabled. Step number three is the cleanup. 
Now, this is where we want to go into our account or maybe even contact the support desk of the account that you're working with and ask them for a list of logs of access to your account. If you find that there's IP addresses or countries in there that you don't recognize, well, that's when you may need to look at more formal recovery efforts. You may need to contract the cybercrime authorities in the country that you're in and you know, perhaps even work with a professional to do an investigation into what the person may have had access to. If someone has access to your identity or to your emails, well, they could easily use that to potentially trick staff members or family members that you know with your identity. And if someone's got access to your email, they've probably got enough information to know who your suppliers are, who your insurers are, who your accountant is, and a lot of damage can actually be done. So getting an idea of who has accessed, when they have accessed, and you know how many times they've accessed your account will give you a bit of an idea, although not a whole picture of what they've accessed. Tread very carefully here because you want to be as suspicious as possible to try and discover what exactly may have been leaked and who might have access to your data now. Number four is securing your hardware. Now, depending on the severity and if you've been infected by a virus or malware of some sort, particularly a crypto locker, well, in some cases, the best solution is to actually completely wipe clean your computers. That means taking a backup of your data, storing that backup in a secure location that is not going to contain the virus, and then wiping that machine clean. Unfortunately, many third-party attackers are able to hide malware or spyware on computers even after some antiviruses have run through them. And so if you've been attacked in a serious way, it might be a good idea to completely start afresh. Now, once you have started afresh, of course, you want to install antivirus, anti-spyware, anti-malware. We call it endpoint protection in the industry. And you may want to work with an IT professional to help you choose the right software that's going to help protect you and your business. Ideally, you're looking for something that has advanced and real-time threat protection and something that is connecting to the cloud and downloading updates so you've got near real-time access to emerging threats to protect you and your business. Now, alongside installing this software, you've got to make sure that it's kept up to date and that it's maintained. And this is where it makes sense to work with an IT professional, either inside your business or potentially outside, and make sure that somebody's responsibility is to look at, are your antiviruses up to date? Are your computers being scanned? And importantly, do you have a disaster recovery program if something were to go wrong in the future? And speaking of the future, let's move on to step five. Awareness and training for your team is critically important. Most vulnerabilities these days come from someone thinking they're legitimately clicking on a website or a post or something related to the business. And unfortunately, they're innocently giving their credentials away to somebody else. Now, two-factor authentication will stop most phishing attacks because even if someone does have your credentials, well, they're not able to access your account without that second factor device. And most accounts will let you know if someone's used your password, but then failed to get access to the account because they didn't have the two factor code. But it's still a good idea to make sure that you're training and educating your team, your staff, and any contractors or suppliers you're working with who may have access to credentials that are in or around your business and make sure that they're up to speed on what to click on and what not to click on. Educate your staff on what a scam URL looks like and what a real business URL looks like. Educate them on how they can check and how they can manage if they suspect a link may not be correct. Even though you can't completely protect your business from these kind of attacks, they can fool just about anyone if they're done in the right way. It does make sense to invest in this training to help minimize things. Finally, most of these things can be implemented by a robust IT policy. If you're working in the Google Workspace ecosystem, well, we can set up policies inside of Google Chrome to lock down what people are able to access and to even set strict guidelines on what machines can access corporate data. That may help you to lock down the chances of a third-party actor getting access to your corporate data. Setting up a mobile device management policy will help you to protect the mobile phones of your team who are accessing business services. And that can mean the difference between someone clicking on a dodgy SMS and opening the wrong website and letting that company data walk out the door versus you being protected if you know which devices are accessing and ensuring that the right security protocols are actually enforced on those devices. There's plenty more videos on our channel about how to use mobile device management and device policy to help you to lock down the security of your staff inside your business using Google Workspace. If you're a business owner concerned about security and you'd like some professional help, well, click on the link down below for a free consultation with our team. We'll review your IT systems and give you some recommendations on how we may be able to help improve things. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. 
If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.